So when I look at uh, America's early history under Colonel George Washington, President Washington, John Adams, and then how they wanted to be called monarchs and how they kissed the fucking British emperor's ass, how the Constitution actually didn't uh, give everybody rights, it excluded black folks, it excluded women, it excluded most white men, anybody under uh, 21 also who didn't have property, so basically the masses had no rights under the American uh, Constitution. The Bill of Rights, just some promises on a piece of paper, um, which may or may not be enforced, right? Who enforces them? The ACLU? Now, nah, Bill O'Reilly says they suck, so who enforces the, the Bill of Rights? There's none of them, right? We don't have anybody fucking defending our rights and freedoms. Just a you know, Bill of Rights is just a bunch of promises on a piece of paper, of which we really don't even get, you know, I don't know, freedom of speech. I guess there is some leeway with that, or I've seen a little bit of leeway. Um, but that's, um, you know, I don't, the police don't actively go out looking to enforce people's right to speak up and say whatever it is that they want to say. Uh, so anyways, there's, uh, this is about the monarchs and about how oppressive the monarchy has been. Um, I was thinking about modernism, postmodernism, and sort of how I think about, like, history. Some of the biggest things that happened, the Holocaust and Hitler, that was a big fucking catastrophe, right? So that was, that's going to change some shit. The internet, the introduction of the internet, that changes a whole bunch of shit. There's a lot of technological, scientific revolutions, right? That changes people's behavior, and it's a nationalistic change. So once people's behavior changes over, you know, a na national region, then their uh, subsequent interactions and behavior is going to change, too. So internets are... Uh, the internets, right, <laughs> the inter interwebs, um, they're uh, going to change the way people interact with one another, and therefore that's not a bad thing, It's uh, it just is, right, it just happens, technological achievements are going to change, automobiles change how people interact, TVs and radios that change the way how people interact, and the internet, which is the Gutenberg print and press revolution times a million, so Gert Gutenberg print and press basically changed, you know, you could start mass printing lots of material and change people's minds, you know, with uh, one or two pamphlets. Um, you know, if you could own a printing press, which actually that sort of was the point, right? So some companies and people could own the equipment, and uh, whereas now you have the internet, and the internet says everybody can bellow and speak real loud out to the crowd as much as they want. Okay, so good freedom, right? Freedom, and we have Fred uh, Frederick William the Fourth. This asshole is fucking stopping the German revolutions of 1848. They uh, had a parliament. They had the Frankfurt Diet. They come up with all these. You know, the Constitution, and they had a Bill of Rights, a German Bill of Rights, right? So it wasn't just the rights of man or the rights of all people, just the German rights. And then you have um, the, uh, they offered the, the kingship to Frederick William the fucking fourth, and he's the one that actually established it. And he says, no, I don't want the kingship. I don't want it to be sullied with its fucking dirty revolutionary stink, the fucking gutter, right? The fucking stink of peasantry wanting fucking freedom. How dare you even offer it? So, you know, he was basically a dick. He started the whole fucking thing, then he dissolves the government and maintains his monarchy and um, he dictates the terms and now the terms is rather than returning to bureaucratic rule after dismissing the Prussian National Assembly Frederick William the fourth promulgated a new constitution that created a parliament of Prussia with two chambers an aristocratic upper house and an elected lower house so aristocratic right so his fucking peeps and then some elections right some democracy some concession the lower house was elected by all taxpayers, but in a three-tiered system based on the amount of taxes paid, uh, true universal suffrage was denied. So, no, it wasn't actually universal suffrage. Not everybody had a right to vote. Constitution also reserved to the king the power of appointing all ministers, reestablished the conservative district assemblies and provincial diets, and guaranteed that civil service and military remain firmly in the hands of the king. So... That's, uh, that's wonderful. He fucking appoints all the ministers and can dissolve the government whenever he feels at his choosing. So therefore, anybody that gets any power whatsoever, all at the fucking hands of the monarchy. All hail the king, right? All hail the fucking king. Constitution also reserved to the king the power of appointing all ministers, reestablished the conservative district assemblies and provincial diets and guaranteed civil service and the military remain firmly in the hands of the king. This is a more of a liberal system that existed in Prussia. Before 1848, but a still conservative system of government with the monarch aristocracy and the military retained most of the power. The constitution remained in effect until dissolution of the Prussian kingdom in 1918. Following the revolutions of 1848, the increasingly gloomy king withdrew from the public eye, surrounded himself with advisors who preached absolute orthodoxy and conservatism in religious and political matters. A stroke in 1857 left the king partially paralyzed and largely mentally incapacitated his brother and heir, presumptive William reserved as regent from 1858 until the king's death in 1861, at which point the regent ascended to the throne himself as William I of Prussia. Frederick 
uh, William the Fourth is buried with his wife in the crypt underneath the Church of Peace in the park of San Suki at Potsdam. So I guess William the First is now the fucking king, right? It, it's good to be the king. Here's a couple other kings I want to burn real fast. Um, you have Frederick William the Second, right? So he's uh, his reign is from 1786 to 1789. Uh, the group servers would have been familiar with this asshole. He's a uh, personal union, the Prince Elector of Brandenburg. You got Brandenburg, which is the capital of Meade County, Kentucky. So also Frankfurt, is that actually Franksfurt? Is that named after a Jewish guy murdered by a Native American, or is it Frankfurt, Germany, right? Did they name it after Germans? Under his reign, Prussia was weakened internally and externally. He failed to deal adequately with the challenges to the existing order posed by the French Revolution. So he's you know, he's a fucking asshole. He's against any fucking freedom and shit. His religious policies were directed against the Enlightenment. So actually, yeah, he's uh, he's going to be the king of Prussia during the fucking French Revolution. They're chopping heads off over in fucking France, and he's he's the goddamn fucking sovereign prince, right, of the principality of neutral neutral or some shit. Um, and actually, I think in the house of Ho Hohen Hohenzollern or Hollenzollern, there's a castle. They named it after a castle. That's where our Hohen. Uh, Hohen Zerlin next he comes from and also quite fascinating we'll come right back to Fritz William but we have uh, Prince George Frederick Frederick this asshole is still you know the fucking <laughs> the monarch continues today so he's actually like uh, he has like some fucking ceremonial roles he's the master of uh, the order of the black eagle the royal um, the royal house order of Hohen Zollern Here's Hohen castle in Schwabia and so this is what the entire family is basically this is the Hohenzollern sort of house, right? The whole, the house of Hohenzollern. So people who come out of this, the bloodlines of, you know, the, the fucking Royal Highness and bloodlines and hereditary. It makes no fucking sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, just whoever is born to somebody is just going to keep on ruling over everybody else. Uh, but a lot of times the wars would have, you know, um, there'd be wars right after somebody, a king would die because they didn't have clear secession. So having a clear, you know, heir presumptive, I think, is a is a it's a good idea. Anyways, that's what you know the president. The if something was to happen to him, it would go to the vice president. And it would go to the speaker of the house. So we have sort of a you know um, a um, a hierarchy. So we have you know uh, what happens during an unfortunate event. We also have elections that happen every four years. So you know we could just deal, deal without a a leader for so many years and then just have elections for the new ones that come up. Uh, but anyways, this is the, uh, that's Hohen, Hohen Zollern Castle, right? So that's probably what they're named after. This guy is still a prince. He's still, he's got a quote here. The German people, I think, should think about bringing back the monarchy. I'm sure it will happen. And he says the monarchy's coming back, right? It's coming back. Fucking fascism. Here it comes. Um, he, but he's also talking about he doesn't want any power and some other shit. But, you know, the fact that he's saying that Germany should have a fucking, you know, one, and he could just be, you know, the, I don't know, they have a royal family of England, right? So he's the Prince of Prussia. What does that mean? It doesn't mean shit. So there's a list of monarchs that actually list him um, uh, as pretenders to the throne of Prussia. So <laughs> you have a list of monarchs, and William II, he abdicates, and that's when, you know, the real power actually ends. But you have William the Second, right, who actually continues to be the acting uh, fucking, you know, the he is the monarch of Prussia, right? He's the man, and then his, Frederick William, and then Louis Ferdinand, and George Frederick. So they've continued on with the, uh, you know, the whole sort of charade that they're going to be a Prussian king, and Prussia's coming back. So Prussia's, you know, disappeared several times. You've seen Prussia disappear here. In 1918, you see the uh, rise of Hitler, so that's sort of anti-Semitism, totalitarianism. That's another fucking anti-sort of monarchist, but it's also anti-totalitarian modern age, too. So that's, uh, I think, postmodernism. I think we have to, when we define where modernism and postmodernism, we have to find the biggest fucking changes. I think chopping the heads off of monarchs is a clear departure from the age of kings and queens. Um, so I think that's one big ass thing, the beheading of King Louis the Sixteenth and uh, Marie Antoinette. But then I also think that the Hitler uh, and his Holocaust and the six million, eight million fucking people and almost taking over the world real fucking quick like he did and murdering so many people. The Holocaust, you know what I mean? And, you know, Stalin's been like that and Mao Zedong. There's lots of people that's killed massive amounts of people. And so we need to fucking, you know, condemn that type of shit. So it's good that we fucking stopped Hitler because... Um, but we become the empire. We become an imperial power. So are we any different? Are we that much different? You know, we're not gassing Jews, right? But we are fucking killing Iraqi people. Now there might not even be an Iraqi state, or it's going to be half an Iraqi state. It'll be a Sunni state. 
you have a, a Shiite state, Sunni state, and a, a Kurdish state, right? Or ISIS might just take over the fucking Vatican, the fucking big ass U.S. embassy, right? So, anyways, the list of monarchs of Prussia. That's that list. George Frederick. So he he carries on, right? So I don't know. It's sort of like Queen Elizabeth. They have ceremonial powers. They're the fucking soul. They're sort of the spiritual fucking. You know, they're the face of the country. So, big time German nationalists, right, right before he dies, he's shitting all over fucking England, calling them Freemasons and a bunch of Jews, right? So, he's saying that the English people are all Jews and that they're Freemasons. The Freemasons, I think, is worthy of thinking about all the secret societies and shit. What the fuck is up with the Freemasons? I think that was George Washington. He is part of it, and some of the other uh, Adams and some of the other ones were all part of this secret society, this secret order, Skulls and Bones, was both Kerry and Bush, and so... You know, what's up with these secret orders and secret societies? Do we all need to start having, like, these sort of little secret societies all over the place? Um, only 800 people in one given time as part of Skulls and Bones. So, basically, the only way anybody can be brought up is whenever somebody dies. That's, a, that's a, amazing. That's insane. So, let's see what it says here. Uh, current head of the House of Hohenzollern, the former ruling dynasty of the German Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia. He's a great-great-grandson of the historic heir. Of William II, the last German Emperor, King of Prussia, was deposed, initially went into exile upon Germany's defeat in World War I in 1918. So, I'm going to check out the Grand Master of these things. The Royal House, the House, Order of the Black Eagle. So, these are like secret organizations that he's the Grand Master of. So, I guess he's the chair, right? So, in terms of Robert's Rules of Order, you got the chair, the person who sort of just dictates the rules and dictates the order of the place but shouldn't actually have their own personal agenda what sometimes a lot of times the chair has their own personal agenda they should just be their own personal agenda should be running a well-ordered meeting that actually you know accomplishes stuff so the order of louise was founded on august 3rd 1814 by frederick william iii of prussia to honor his late wife the much beloved queen Luisi, ne, ne Luisi Augusta William. The order is chivalric in nature, but attended strictly for women whose service to Germany is worthy of such high national recognition. Wow, so it's for the women, right? So, though the Prussian king is technically the sovereign of the orders of the realm, the chief of the order of Louise was the reigning queen. Daughters in the royal families invest in this order in lieu of the order of the Black Eagle, order of the Red Eagle, <laughs> Grand Cross. Prussian Crown Order, First Class Royal Order of Hohenzollern were reserved for the sons. The Order of Louise was renewed for each successive king or emperor. It was thus issued for its founding in 1814 during the reign of Frederick William III, renewed 1850 during the reign of Frederick William IV, and 1865 during the reign of William I, and 1890 during the reign of William II. Prussian Crown Order, the first class. You know, here's another secret society. Look at all these, you know, Prussia's lowest ranking order of chivalry. So, actually, you're, you're a skank. You know, you're good, but you're kind of the, you know, you're like new money, right? You're not old money, you're new money. <laughs> um, house Order of Ho uh, Hohenzollern, Order of the Chivalry. More chivalry. It's all about, I guess, just opening doors up for women. So, that's that determines whether or not you're a good or bad person, how big of a slave you are to a woman. Um, how, you know, the trivial things that you do for her, open the car door, open the door for the house, you know, um, hold her hand as she crosses the street or make sure she doesn't walk in a puddle and have an umbrella so she stays dry, right? Just basically be like her personal servant just to make, you know, it's, you know baby her, basically just baby her, right? Just make sure she, she's, treat her like a god, right? Treat her like a, a, a sovereign. She's the sovereign herself and that's the mark of a true chivalrous gentleman right chivalry that's that comes from the royal fucking blood of just acting like you know royalty just pretend that you're fucking royalty and everybody else will just race on to you king anne's world queen queen anne's war king george king william king george third all these people all their fucking armies was they tricked all the people just to follow them in the, in the dying form german nationalism is a fucking it's a bitch man so I'm not I'm not a German nationalist. I'm a German American nationalist. <laughs> I'm a German Kentucky uh, Kentuckian nationalist. So that's more precise. It's more specific. And I just I think that there's a lot of good qualities that come out of German culture. So uh, Order of the Black Eagle, highest order of chivalry in the Kingdom of Prussia. Order is founded blah blah blue. Frederick I of Prussia. He's uh, the Duke of Prussia, personal union, Brandenburg, Prussia, latter function, upgraded royalty, first king of Prussia, personal union, sovereign prince of principality, paternal grandfather, Frederick the Great, 
Frederick William the First of Prussia. Look at all these. They're so girly too, right? Look at me. I'm I'm Frederick William the First. And I'm tough. You better listen here, Missy. Missy, you better just shut your mouth, Missy. <laughs> I'm gonna invade your country. Yes, I will. No, Napoleon, you can't come over here. Oh my god, what the fuck? 